If you happen to be at an airport in North America or Europe, especially within the United States, you'll likely see a narrow slim body looking aircraft, bigger than a 737 but smaller than a 777, taking off at major hubs in the United States to other key hubs in the country, or departing key hubs along the US East Coast departing for transatlantic flights to Europe. This aircraft is the Boeing 757, which despite no longer being made today still remains a part of some airlines fleet despite being first made in the 1980s. While still prominently used in North America and Europe, it has for the most part been a rare sight at Asian airports. This video will take a look at the Boeing 757 and why it never really picked up with Asian airlines. In the late 1970s, Boeing was looking to replace the Boeing 727 as a premier short-haul aircraft, which at the time was a bestseller among airlines including those in Asia. First dubbed as the 7N7, Boeing would come up with the twin jet design of the 757 we now know today. Looking to make it a versatile aircraft, it featured a high thrust to weight ratio for better usage in hot and humid environments and with the size of the aircraft would be capable to operate in smaller runways. At the same time, Boeing was also developing another twin jet, the 7X7 which we now today refer to as the 767 with a longer range and higher capacity. Both the 767 and 757 projects shared similar features among them the common type cockpit rating allowing pilots of either aircraft to operate the other. While with a similar twin jet look, the 757 was a single aisle aircraft with a typical configuration of three seats by three, providing a capacity of anywhere between 200 to 250 seats, with a maximum range of over 7,000 kilometers. Eventually, it would see its first service with Eastern Airlines in 1983, the first of what we now know as mid-size aircraft to take flight, yet with the reach comparable to the likes of the Airbus A300, which was introduced nearly a decade prior. Despite the early challenges such as the growing deregulation amongst the U.S. carriers, eventually airlines saw it as a solution for the growing noise complaints and congestion at the airports, paving the way for the 757 to become the premier short to medium haul aircraft among the U.S. based carriers. Thanks to ETOPS certification, airlines such as Delta, United, and American can use the aircraft from the West Coast to Hawaii or flights from the East Coast of the U.S. to Europe which previously required aircraft like DC-10s or 747s. The aircraft would be produced for nearly 22 years from 1982 to 2004, when Boeing decided to focus on the 737, despite the aircraft model from the 1970s, would develop the Boeing 737 Next Generations and later the MAX. In all, Boeing delivered over 1,000 Boeing 757s, including the variants the Dash 200, the Dash 300, along with the cargo version of the Dash 200, and of that the Dash 200 was the most popular with over 900 orders and deliveries. Despite its age, it's heavily relied on by United and Delta as well as FedEx for short and medium haul cargo operations. Along with prominently used by North American and European airlines, it has also been used by government and militaries alike, along with private aircraft operators. Among these aircraft is the US Air Force C-32, a variant of the 757 mostly used by high-ranking U.S. government officials, including the Vice President of the United States and in some cases has been used as Air Force One by the U.S. President. Among the private aircraft holders, one of the more famous private Boeing 757s was used by current U.S. President Donald Trump before taking office with a custom-made 757 dubbed Trump Force One used by the Trump Organization. While the 757 was actively used in North America and Europe, there were a few operators of the aircraft within the Asia Pacific, though for the most part it wasn't as popular and widely used. This isn't to say that there wasn't any utility for the aircraft Nepal Airlines used in its rugged environment. Along with several Chinese carriers, a total of 59 aircraft were used by several Chinese-based carriers such as China Southern, Xiamen Air, China Southwest, and Shanghai Airlines. Another airline, Royal Brunei Airlines, used the aircraft to start its long-haul operations before later switching to the 767s in the 1990s. Like Royal Brunei Airlines, Philippine-based Cebu Pacific would use these aircraft to start its international operations to Seoul and Hong Kong, before dropping the aircraft in favor of the Airbus A320s and later using Airbus A330s. The most prominent Asian carrier to use the aircraft was Singapore Airlines, which had four of the 
jets mostly used on routes between Indonesia and Malaysia between 1984 to 1989. The airline would switch to the Airbus A310s, which were more popular with the travelers, with the twin aisle versus the single aisle 757, and the airline could use containers to fill the cargo hold with a shorter loading time. While the Japanese carriers did not operate the 757, it did see use with Northwest and Delta on intra-Asia Pacific routes to and from Japan, including the resort destinations of Guam, Saipan, and Palau. Currently, these aircraft are being replaced or plans are being made for their replacement. And today, it's often a very rare sight to see these aircraft unless you see them as a cargo aircraft from Air China or China Postal. And there isn't any demand for these older aircraft, such as in the case of Nepal Airlines, which has been struggling to sell an old 757. While there was some benefits, most Asian carriers did not see the use of it at a time when most of Asia's skies were regulated. And providing capacity was the name of the game with 747s, DC-10s, and A300s dominating the scene, which provided a longer range compared to the 757s. Another point to consider was the 767 usage, which with a larger capacity and a twin aisle configuration was more popular and purchased by several of Asian carriers such as All Nippon Airways and Japan Airlines, which currently still uses the aircraft today. For the most part, most Asian carriers have stuck with the 737 and Airbus A320 for most of its short haul needs. Though with the Airbus A321 and its long range A321 XLR offerings coming up from Airbus, the conditions in the United States in the 1980s with growing congestion and crowding at airports could be seen as a similar situation going on in Asia with the growing need for bigger capacity on aircraft while being able to use smaller airports. And it seems unlike the Boeing 757, Airbus seems to have a better timing with the aircraft needs in Asia. As Boeing remains in a situation with its answer, the 737 MAX in limbo due to the scrutiny it has faced along with the new mid-size aircraft concept, or the NMA, which is still in development. While few 757s are taken to the skies, it is considered an aviation classic, and still has good use on routes such as from Newark to Berlin, Chicago to Edinburgh, or Washington DC to London, transatlantic routes that the aircraft was ideal for. In the Asian market, it was an aircraft ahead of its time. I definitely hope you enjoyed this video and if you have any previous experience flying on a 757 as a flight crew or passenger, let me know how you thought about the aircraft. Also, what are your thoughts on the Boeing 757? Hope you enjoyed this. This has been Flights in Asia. If you like this video, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Once again, thank you for watching and have a great day.